Hello everyone and welcome to the channel for yet another Dwarf 2 post-processing video. Now tonight, uh, what I'm hoping to shoot is in fact the Caldwell 7 uh, Galaxy or uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's all it's called, just Caldwell 7. I don't believe it actually has an official name. Uh, you can only see it typically from the Northern Hemisphere. It's not a Southern Hemisphere uh, object as it's very actually close to the North Star. Uh, as you can see, I already have my Dwarf 2 calibrated. This is actually from the same image as the previous uh, Dwarf 2 video. Um, but what we're doing tonight, as I said, we're actually pho pho uh, photographing a galaxy. And for tonight, we're using the Dwarf 2 UHC filter. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to make sure your Dwarf 2 is calibrated and uh, per properly focused. Uh, make sure you have your binning turned off. Uh, settings set to 15 and for the coordinates of that galaxy, we're going to go to the Stellarium app. We're going to find Caldwell 7. So just type in C7. Should be right here. There we go. We have the coordinates. It's 7, 39, and 9. Go ahead and type that in. 7, 39, and 9. Click confirm. Go back. And we have 65, 32, and 45. Go find that. 65, 32, and what was it? 45. So let's go ahead and go there. Hit confirm. It should automatically go to the deep sky object if it is done properly. Obviously, you want to allow your dwarf to, to properly plate solve. And once the plate solving is complete, just go ahead and press the start shooting button. I'm on it. Obviously, just going to have to wait a little bit for the trees to get out of the way uh, before I can actually get it done. Oh, actually, it is not in the way. It says go to tracking. Let's go ahead and check the Stellarium app to make sure. The stars do seem to be properly aligned. So that is good. This should be uh, about exactly where we need to be. Uh, so once we're done, just go ahead and press the start shooting button to begin taking the images. We'll allow it to uh, obtain all the data that we need. Uh, afterwards, we're going to take it into serial for post-processing. So stay tuned. All right, I now have all of the data just now transferred from my Dwarf 2 to my laptop for Caldwell 7. Let's take a look at what we can get here. Um, unfortunately, it did not actually save all 999 files, so I ended up getting stuck with only 490. Uh, unfortunately, I believe my Dwarf 2 died in the middle of the night because my power source was interrupted. Uh, but it should be okay. Let's see what we can get with this nonetheless. Uh, let's go to desktop. Let's see, Caldwell 7, open that. Uh, the script, we're going to use OFC preprocessing without dark bias or flats. Also, in your preferences, make sure you have it set at Bayer Mosaic Pattern GBRG and hit apply on that. Then you go to scripts and run OFC preprocessing without dark bias or flats and allow that to run, and we'll come back to once that's complete. All right, stacking is now complete, so let's get started on the processing of this. So let's open it up. Uh, let's move to auto stretch here. Here's my laptop is bugging out just a bit. Honestly, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but uh, the fan's going kind of wild. So let me go ahead and auto stretch now. There we go. Unlink it. And here is Caldwell 7. Obviously, it's pretty difficult to see uh, even with the Dwarf 2 on the one by one binning because it's a pretty small galaxy. You know, it's not big. So it's understandable that it would be fairly difficult to observe. We have a lot of uh, noise here despite the Astro Darks being taken. It's okay. We'll, we'll try to work around it anyway. So let's check this out. Uh, let's go ahead and do our background extraction. Generate that. I would like to get more samples, however. So generate it again. Uh, more samples per line. Generate. More. Generate. And add it in these areas where there's no galaxy, but it just didn't select it for some reason. Let's just get that all in there. Here we go. Compute the background. There we go. Background is computed. Apply that. There we go. Okay. Now let's do our remove green noise. Apply that. 
And then last but not least, we do our photometric color calibration. It's called well 7, so just type in C7, find. Okay, it did not want to work like that. It's called well 7. Okay, it's not showing up. So C7. Still nothing found. Okay, so let's look it up, look it up, see what the name of that's actually called. Google Chrome. Let's find that. All right, called L7 NGC2403. There we go. Let's type that in here. NGC2403. Find. There we go. There it is. Okay. Hit OK here. There we go. The photometry is now done. Uh, let's go to our uh, linear mode. And get rid of the stars here. Let's see, start processing, start and start removal, pre stretch, and execute. All right, that is now complete. Let's go ahead and start the processing. Uh, generalized hyperbolic stretch, we'll bump this up to 100. Move this along. There we go. Here's our histogram curve. Let's go ahead and drag this up. Obviously, not too far. Kind of lower it down a bit. Apply that, bring the black point up. Obviously, we can tell this one's tough. It's it's not going to be a lot of detail on this one. Uh, so we don't want to clip it too much. Apply that. Select this part here. Bring it up a bit more. Apply. Black point. Up again. Apply. Close. And go back here. Uh, obviously, we do see a good amount of the galaxy here. Um, obviously, I'm sure we would have gotten more ha had we had the whole 999 uh, sub-exposures. Also, we did have a light show uh, coming through here in Georgia at the same time that I was imaging this. Hence, we have why we have these weird stripes here at that certain pattern. Uh, but it's okay. Honestly, I'm still fine with how this is looking so far. Color saturation, bring that up. Obviously, we don't want to do it too much, but just enough. There you go. Now you zoom out again. Save. Recenter it and bring our stars back in. Star processing. Star recomposition. Starless result. And star mask. Bring the black point up just a tiny bit more. Apply and apply. Let's go ahead and go back here and look at our final result. Now, again, this would have possibly been better had we used a program such as PixInsight to do the processing as it does rely on a bit of AI programming. Uh, this is what we have with our serial programming, working with the raw data taken from the Dwarf 2 telescope. Again, remember that it is a very small deep sky object um, in comparison to the zoom that the Dwarf 2 actually has in field of view. Uh, honestly, I'm quite happy with what we were able to get with just the 490 sub exposures. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Honestly, I think this is a pretty neat image. Uh, it's not a bright galaxy, so it is fairly dim, a fairly difficult deep sky object to actually observe. Again, it's only visible here in the northern hemisphere. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And please, if you could, leave a like and subscribe. It does support the channel uh, and it lets other people uh, come to learn about the videos as well. So. Thank you all for watching. I do hope you have great, perfect, beautiful, clear skies and have a good night.